Hello for Burning the Gear to you, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And luckily for you, people who are sick of watching these side quest videos, this will probably be the last episode where we'll be taking care of stuff in Zoro's Domain. And that's a giant fishy. Okay, I know this was a giant fish, but it's a little hard to see the details of it during the day, so I'm really glad we're getting this uh, shot right now. I'm saving a picture. <laughs> But anyway, in today's episode, we'll be taking care of the last of the side quests across Zora's Domain. So, what we want to do is that we'll be going over this way, and we'll be talking to this guy. Link, it seems that I was wrong about you. Seeing Divine Beast Revertus form there. Even though we lost uh, Lady Mifa, it seems you can still help a... Uh, it seems she could still help you fight against Calamity again. I cannot read today. <laughs> oh, and I am sorry I did not introduce myself sooner. I am Jahato. I am a historian who studies Zora history and preserves it for future generations. Even so, the stone monument that King Dorfian supposedly wrote is torn to pieces now. Most likely, the ten stone monuments outside of the domain are in the same awful condition. I'm thinking about collecting the content of all the stone monuments and compiling them into a book. But with these old legs and fins, uh, traveling to all ten stone monuments will take a great deal of time. That is why, Link, I'd like to ask a favor of you. I'd like you to find all ten Azoran monuments around Azoran's domain and tell me what they say. Oh, thank you, you truly are a lifesaver. I'll be assuring that the champion will search for all those monuments for me. I have a good authority that among the stone monuments, one of them has a location of some treasure written on it. If you happen to find said treasure, feel free to keep it. It will most likely be something that Azora wouldn't need. Yes, you'll need to find the ten stone monuments around Zora's domain. I believe in you. In fact, I'm counting on you. So, if you talk to him, he'll give you hints on the locations of some of these uh, uh, stone monuments. I don't need those hints because I already know exactly where everything is, so yay! We can see Zora's domain off in the distance over there, and the first of the stone monuments we'll be searching for should be around here somewhere. And by around here somewhere, I mean we're a cliff tier too high. Uh, the one we want to look for is going to be over here. Now, you may have seen these already on your way to get to Zora's Domain, so what I recommend you do is, and I probably should have said this before, but I recommend you make note of these locations as you get across this area, um, because some of these can be a little tricky to find. Um, is it not going to let me do the thing? There we go. Yep. Let me talk to the thing. <laughs> History of the Zora, Part 1, The Eternal Zora's Domain, as told by King Dorfin. The rains have blessed Lanayru since ancient times with an abundance of pure, clean water. Seeking a bounty of such a water, the Zora gathered there. Thus, as legends go, the domain was born 10,000 years ago. The land was also rich in ore, and so a unique form of stonemasonry was developed to create a new home. The domain is one giant sculpture, a feat of architecture that has drawn admirers for the world over. Our great domain will ever stand as a hallmark of the esteemed artist who made it, an eternal a symbol of Zora pride. And the next one is literally just around the corner. <laughs> Man, these things are not letting me interact with them. <laughs> There we go. I guess it's not going to work if we lock onto him. History of the Zora, Part 2, A Reservoir of Hope, as told by King Dorfin. Once every ten years, the Lanaru region experiences unusually heavy rainfall. The Zora River flooded every time. The tides damage not only our domain, but our people, washing away poor souls and causing great suffering and disarray. The Zora King at the time, after seeking aid from the King of Hyrule, rode out to see what could be done. By joining the architectural genius of the Zora and Hyrule's technological prowess, East Reservoir Lake was swiftly built. Thanks to this fruitful partnership, Hyrule was no longer plagued by these devastating floods. In gratitude, the Zora King promised the King of Hyrule to manage at the reservoir level to protect all of Hyrule from floods. 
Each Zora king since has kept that oath, spending 10,000 years. That is why the reservoir signifies our bond with Hyrule. Rallis Pond is going to be located over there. If you watched the previous episode in the playlist, you'll know that there's a Hinox over there needed for a side quest. And Azara's Domain is going to be located over there. This one could be a little bit hard to pinpoint exactly where it is if you're only looking at a map. But uh, the next part of the Azara Stone Monument is going to be located down here next to this lake over here. History of the Zora, Part 3, Miracle of the White Scale Our scholars say that in the distant past, Zora's domain had a king with no special talent for the art of war. What he lacked in the skill of the blade, he made up for in his love for his people, and especially love for his queen. One day, news reached that the king of, Azor that the king of a horde of monsters is gathering in the Zaboda Highlands. The king steeled himself for war to protect his people, but the queen knew how ill-suited for the task he was. Worried for his life, she wove one of her own scales into his armor, hoping that her love would protect him in battle. It seemed for a time that the tide of battle favored the Zora and all that make it safely home. But the cunning Lazalfo's uh, general saw an opening and seized it, driving the king's forces into a corner. Just when the general's sword was ready to crash down upon the king, a miracle took place. An errant sunbeam reflected from the scale of his armor blinded the Azophos, stopping the death blow from falling. This was the chance the king needed to rally his forces and turn the tide, taking down the general and securing victory. This came to be known as the Miracle of the White Scale, a scale that only female Zora possess. It was this miracle that began the tradition of the Zora princesses crafting armor for their future husbands. Part 4 of the Zora Stone Monument so it can be easily accessed if you go from Ludo's Crossing. History of the Zora Part 4 The Light Skill Trident the queen and I were blessed with a daughter as lovely as a jewel. We named our princess Mipha. To celebrate her birth, the smithy dental presented Mipha with a gift, a mighty spear called the Light Skill Trident. Mipha grew into a bright girl and soon reached the age of receiving lessons from the royal family's order of knights. The whole of the royal guard adored her, especially Sergeant Sagan, who loved her as if she were his own kin. Under Sagan's instruction, Mipha honed her skills, and her radiance grew along with her skill with the Light Skill Trident. As a champion, Mipha made her people proud. However, once the Great Calamity struck, she was never to return. All of Zora's domain fell into misery. The merest thought of the princess was enough to overcome anyone with tears. As a way of offering her soul repose, they tried to send the Light Skill Trident drifting down the Zora River. But when they did, the trident began to glow, and Mipha's voice rang loud and clear for all Zora to hear. The Light Skill Trident and I are one. Abandon your grief and no joy once again. Do not cry, just remember. And so, keeping to her request, uh, on the day of the Great Calamity, the day that Mipha passed from this world, does Zora venture the Light Skill Trident and remember their brave princess? Such is the origin of the Champion Festival. The next one could be easily accessed if you teleport by Divine Beast for Ruta. And the next one's gonna be located way down there. Last minute save. History of the Zora, Part 5 The Sage Princess Ruto. Long, long ago, in a past more distant than even the Great Calamity or the Christ and the Divine Beast for Ruto, there was a Zora princess named Ruto. We know that she was the attendant to the Zora patron deity, and that she was a fair and lively girl, beloved to all. Around the same time, an evil man with designs of ruling the world appeared, bringing disaster upon Zora's domain. It is said that Ruto then awoke as a sage, facing this foe alongside the princess of Hyrule and the hero of legend. 
Her achievements are remembered not only by the Zora, they are also forever etched into the history of Hyrule. The Divine Beast Veruta, built ages later to face against Calamity Ganon, was named in honor of the, was named in honor of Ruto. That the Zora Princess, so my sweet daughter Mifa, was chosen to pilot Ruto is surely the work of fate. The location of this next one is a little bit hard to pinpoint exactly, but when we were going on our path to get to Zora's domain when we first arrived in this area, over there was Ludo's Crossing, you can also see Divine Beast of uh, Veruto up there. If we go over here this way, the next Zora Stone Monument is located right here. History of the Zora, Part 6, Divine Beast Veruto. When the Divine Beast Veruto was first discovered at Zoro's Domain, my daughter Mifa hurried to see it. Those present that day say that they saw an unusual spark of excitement in Mifa's normally calm eyes as she beheld Ruta. The princess spoke the Divine Beast as she would a friend and was overjoyed when she was chosen to pilot Ruta. I thought nothing of it at the time, but given the events that followed, I now regret allowing this to happen. I've spent many long years consumed by guilt. My dearest wish is that her soul will know peace. I pray for it every day. And the final piece of the story can be found over here. This one's pretty hard to miss, to be completely honest, so it's just right over here. Like I said before, on your path to Zora's Domain, it's a good idea to make note of any stone monuments you can possibly find. Again, probably should have mentioned that when we first came to this area. Hattori of the Zor, Patsvin, the hero who defeated as the Dibdibble. There was a time when the Dibdibble of the land was thinned by the J beast Lin, with a lived in Plum Mountain. But once Sindro drove the beast back, and I. So yeah, we can't exactly read any of this. <laughs> Time has taken its toll on this. Who says that? Okay, seriously, who says this line right here? This is a speech bubble. But nobody else is around here, but Link doesn't talk. If you're having trouble figuring out uh, where a stone monument you haven't found yet is, you can talk to uh, him. You can talk to Jonto again. I have no idea how to pronounce the guy's name. <laughs> You'll mention uh, a location that a stone monument can be found at, and once you're done with that, he'll let you know how many are remaining. So even though there are only seven main parts of the stone monument, there's actually three more that we haven't seen yet. On the path that we took to get to Zoro's Domain, uh, there's a Swiss Robe guy. And the next stone monument is actually right here. There's one that we actually did see on the path to get over to this place. History of the Zora, Addendum 1, King Dorfin stands his ground. Around 100 years after King Dorfin ascended to the throne, a stray guardian crossed upland as Arona into our domain. The guardian seemed unstoppable. Our best soldier's spears barely left a scratch on its metal hull. It was then that our King Dorfian, without a thought for his own safety, came out to face the Guardian himself. With supernatural strength, he lifted the Guardian and hurled it into a ravine. The impact of the fall left the Guardian in pieces, and was never to trouble another Zora ever again. The citizens celebrated the King's valor. From then on, their trust and respect for him grew beyond compare. You can still see the scar here in that day on his forehead, a token of his triumph. Huh. He does have a scar on his forehead. <laughs> I never noticed that before. Plumas Mountain is right here, which means that the Lionel is up there. So we definitely want to avoid that. <laughs> and the next one is located right here. History of the Zora, Addendum 2, of Prince Sidon's Great Escape. There was once a giant octa rock in Hatano Bay, large as a mountain, which terrorized the village's fishers. Hearing of their distress, Prince Sidon went forth to personally eliminate the offending octa rock. But this octa rock was a tricky beast, 
After the prince had dodged one of the stones it spat, it inhaled him whole. Such has been the fate of many strong warriors who went to slay the Octorok. Not one of them had come back alive. Just as it seemed a Prince Sidon would be counted among them, the giant Octorok twisted in pain. The tip of the silver scale spear pierced the Octorok's stomach from within, revealing itself as the source of the beast's agony. Incredibly, Prince Sidon had fought his way out of by stabbing his spear over and over into the monster's stomach. Unable to bear the pain, the Octorok coughed up the prince and scrambled to escape. Ever since, the fishers of Hatano Bay have passed down this heroic tale. The prince who slew the fell Octorok. That one is very well worth mentioning because uh, we've never seen a giant Octorok like that, at least not as far as I can tell. So, something about that kind of makes me feel like that was supposed to be a field monster we'd see. Like, maybe you would have originally fought a giant Octorok, but there's only really like one type of Octorok in the entire game. And we never see a giant one in the game. Like, there are definitely giant Octoroks in the Zelda series, so maybe that's supposed to be, like, a reference to that. But it's just kind of interesting that they mention that, even though we never see one ourselves or their adventure. And this aerial shot of Zora's domain is just incredible. <laughs> I know I already praise the architecture of this place, but, man, the Zora's domain is just so pretty. <laughs> And the exact location of this next one is a little hard to pinpoint exactly where it is, but uh, we can see the shrine over there in Zoro's Domain. But basically just know that the rock cliff that has all these ore deposits on it, that's where you want to start. And then you want to fall all the way down here, and the final stone monument will be located down here. So let's go over here and read the final monument. Memoir of a Gifted Stone Mason. What an honor it was to receive a personal request from King Dorofin to craft a historical stone monument. I did not realize how much content he'd give me, though. It certainly exceeded the line limits of a single monument. I suppose I could have just shortened the text, but it felt wrong to tamper with our great king's words. Thankfully, I was able to split it all between seven monuments to ensure that every word was preserved. I've always felt prided myself on my ability to think outside the box. I'm so very adaptable and humble as well. While I was on it, I thought, why not add two, two of my own? And so I created one for King Dorfin and one for Prince Sidon. True, this is outside the scope of my commission, but I believe their triumphs deserve as much. But why stop at that? Why indeed, my achievement surely deserves a remembrance too. That is how a commission of one became ten. Of course, having increased the number of monuments, I had to find places for them all. That proved too difficult. Still, it is worth it. So long as I remember the si to sign these monuments, my name will be remembered forever, as it should be. We never see a name on any of these monuments. <laughs> so, unfortunately, it seems like, at least for the time being, we don't know who actually made those. <laughs> So that goes to show, if you do commission work, remember to sign your name. <laughs> ah. Link, it would seem you have checked all the stone monuments for me. Now then, please tell me what was written on all of them. Ah. Hmm, history, culture, folklore, and various heroic acts of the proud Azora people, it's all here. Eureka! Thanks to you, I've compiled the precious information from those stone monuments. <laughs> Link, thank you for taking on such an adorous task. Please allow me to reward you. And we get a diamond! Zora Stone Monuments complete. Unfortunately, we can't really read this one either, although it looks like it's just a copy of the other one that we saw. Time has taken its toll on this. Okay, so that one seems a bit more obvious that this guy is saying it, but seriously, who says that on the last one? Because Link is the only one there, but Link never talks in these games. 
the diamond is not going to be the only reward that we can get during the side quest. One of the stone monuments had implied that there's some kind of treasure near Total Lake, so that just happens to be over here. If you don't know where this is, then Zoro's Domain is located over here, and now you know exactly where it is. <laughs> So we can go over here and we can see that there are some ruins that look like they've been flooded. So somewhere around here is going to be a treasure chest for us to find. Luckily we have the power of Magnesis on our side. It might take a moment to exactly find where it is because I don't remember exactly where it is to be completely honest. <laughs> I found the thingy. It's barely out of reach. <laughs> All right, fine game. I didn't want to break the ice thingy. Oh, I'm sad now. That's not how I wanted to break the ice. <laughs> I'm not funny. So we go over here, and uh, there's a treasure chest right here. We can open it to claim. The Zora Helm. Zora headgear made from dragon scales increases a swimming speed and allows you to spin uh, to attack underwater. Now this is a pretty cool one. And now we can look like a Zora. And that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so now we can go over here and we can do a spin attack. So this allows us to attack enemies underwater and things like that. Now, unfortunately, we still can't swim underwater, and we're never going to get that ability, which is very unfortunate. But we now have the ability to attack underwater. Now, admittedly, it's honestly not going to be that useful because we need to have the Zora Helm equipped to be able to do this. Similar to how the Zora shirt makes it so that we can climb up waterfalls and things like that. But... Honestly, this is one of my favorite pieces of armor in the entire game because every single piece of this uh, armor equipment set does something special. The shirt lets us swim up waterfalls, the helm lets us attack underwater, and the greaves will help us swim faster. So this is just all kinds of awesome. <laughs> and now I can look like the locals and blend in incognito. No one will ever suspect that I'm secretly Hylian. <laughs> So that's pretty much everything that we can do in Zora's Domain. That doesn't mean that we're completely done with this place though. It just means that it's going to be a while before we actually come back here. So just keep that in mind. There is still stuff for us here to do here. But most of it's related to DLC content, which we won't be taking care of for a while. But what I will take care of right now is, first of all, I'll probably have the ceremony tried and equipped so that we can look a bit more fancy. But something I like to do is um, every time we complete everything there is to do in a region we can find a champion in, I would like to demonstrate what that champion's amiibo does. So on screen right now, you're going to see every type of material that the Mifa Amiibo will be able to give you. And those are in the inventory as well. Okay, so that's pleasant. Uh, I don't need this. Let's get rid of that. And claim our sweet, sweet reward. So like I said, whenever we complete everything within uh, the region a champion lives in, we'll be using that champion's Amiibo and demonstrate what they can do. Now, there are a lot of Breath of the Wild Amiibos, and honestly, this might be one of my favorite collections of Amiibo that Nintendo's ever released. Pretty much every single figure just looks so amazing and incredibly detailed. And this is really exciting because I love Amiibo, and it's just always really fun to see Nintendo actually make more of them. <laughs> because for the longest time, it seemed like most people only really cared about the Smash Amiibo, and I could totally understand that. And it definitely does seem like the Smash Amiibo really are the only ones that 
people care about nowadays anyway. But I think the Breath of the Wild Amiibo line might be my favorite, and I really, really hope they make a Breath of the Wild Amiibo line for the second game, whenever Breath of the Wild 2 comes out. So, so to end off this video, there is another tradition I'd like to start. When we complete everything in the Champion's home region, I'd like to return uh, to our home in Hatsuno Village. The ceremonial trident was Mifa's weapon of choice, and now we should display it in our house. This is something that I'll be doing for every champion in the game. So now we're taking care of all that, we're in this video off here. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Keep in mind that even though this is the last of the content in Zora's Domain, there's still plenty of stuff to do in the Lenero region itself, and that's going to be one of the options you can go for. In the next video on the playlist, however, we're going to be completely ignoring all of the stuff in the Lenero region, and we're going to go search for that special sword that King Dorothean had mentioned to us. So we're going to search for that in the next video on the playlist. Your alternate route, however, is to take care of side quests across the Lanua region that aren't necessarily in Zora's domain itself. You can also search for Koroks across the Lanua region, or ignore everything and go straight for Ganon. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I believe you're to you, and where would you like to go to next?